Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the Alpha Girl Confidence Podcast. This is episode 178, and I'm your host, Shay Hatto. So in this episode, I sat down with Buford Mobley, who is the creator of the Soccer Parent Lifestyle Facebook group and the author of the new book, The Soccer Parent Lifestyle. So in this conversation, which was a live in my Facebook group, we dove into a lot of things around the youth sports landscape. And yes, we focus on soccer, but this episode is going to be relevant for any sports parent. So we dove into kind of the problems with the youth sports landscape, but also a lot of solutions and how the solution starts with you as the parent. So this episode is going to be very powerful for parents. So make sure you take notes and check out his book because it has some massive, massively important solutions that all parents can dive into. So enjoy the episode. All right, preparing and we are live, Buford. So Buford, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I know a lot of my audience already knows you. Um, A lot of them probably came from your group, Um, but just for for you guys to, and Buford, I'll let you do a quick intro, but Buford, you are the creator of the Soccer Soccer Parent Lifestyle Facebook group, and then the author of your newly published book, The Soccer Parent Lifestyle, Um, and excited to have you on, um, and where we're going to talk about all things, your book, all things, you know, navigating the the youth soccer landscape and mistakes and and all the all the stuff soccer parenting. So Buford, go ahead and give us just a quick little intro. Who are you? What are you about? Okay, uh, thank you for having me, Shay. It, yeah. It's an honor to be here, first of all. And um, I'm, as she says, I'm Buford Mobley. Um, not a, not a soccer guru, just just a a soccer dad. Um, when, when my son hit about U14, uh, there, there were a lot of things that I thought was wrong with the youth soccer world. I, I know that comes as a shock, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I kept asking parents around me, you know, what what should you do here? And, and none of them had a clue either. And I said, well, there's got to be a better way. And, um, my son at the time played for a very large club, about 11,000 kids. And so, you know, basically I thought the soccer universe was our club. And, um, you know, when we went to our first travel tournament, I found out there was a whole nother world out there that I had no idea existed. Yeah. And, you know, my first question was, well, why can't my kid play with these kids over here, you know? And um, so, and nobody could give me answers and the club wasn't very helpful. So I just took it upon myself to learn everything I could about youth soccer. And the more I talked to parents, the more I found out parents didn't know. So I said, well, let me just start a community because, and we can all learn from each other. And uh, that's how my first Facebook group came came along. Um, We won't talk about what happened with that one, but... um, (laughs) Uh, eventually I moved on and created the soccer parent lifestyle, which is, is my group now. And, um, so that's basically the, the, the start of my business and why I'm in the soccer business as it is. Okay. So a lot, a lot to unpack there. Um, what was like, I mean, you kind of already touched on it, but you started writing the book. What was it in 2021? Uh, yes, I, I started writing it probably in November okay. of last year. Yeah. Cool. What was the, the driving force, the motivation, uh, kind of like the big goal um, for writing that book? Well, um, my, my son had just wrapped up his senior season and decided not to play in college. And, you know, after I got over all that heartache and everything, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I, I just while while it was fresh in my mind, I wanted to kind of, kind of write in the book and capsulize my thinking um, as to the entire youth soccer journey while while it was still, you know, very very fresh in my mind. And um, my main premise behind the book is that, you know, there are certain things that we can control in soccer. There are a lot of things that we can't control, but, you know, how, how can we, how can we kind of like 
encapsulate all that into a formula mm -hmm. to to you know have a set piece of a set guidance the set guidelines as to how we can help our kids go through the journey and um yeah. you know with soccer every, every kid is different um you know mm -hmm. people who have multiple kids i've got two kids and mm -hmm. my two kids are night and day so yeah. you know you know, I, I, I struggle with how do you write, you know, a formula for something that takes into allowance of differences of kids. And, um, you know, I thought about it for a couple of years, actually, and I came up with the pedal formula in the book. Yeah. So I, I want to dive deep into the pedal form. I mean, not too deep because I want everyone to get the book, but like dive a little bit deep. But before we get into the pedal formula, which I think is genius, um, I want to ask you like what, like, obviously there's, there's a lot of problems in youth sports and youth soccer, and you highlight a few of those. Um, what would you say? And I'm sure some of the parents listening can are like, yes, like I totally see that. What are some of the problems, the biggest problems you see in, in the youth soccer and youth sports landscape? Well, the first thing is, it is way too fragmented. Um, you know, you've got U.S. club soccer, U.S. soccer, you've got 38 leagues and, you know, 35 national championships. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a huge marketing machine and this is in youth sports in general mm -hmm. i feel like we're we're professionalized professionalizing our kids at too early of an age um you know we've got nine and ten year olds now traveling four states mm -hmm. to play soccer and you know which is ridiculous yeah uh, you know I, and you know that's coming from someone who love to travel to tournaments. I, 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 I love it. But, you know, every family can't, when they've got multiple kids doing multiple things, you know, you got parents that are one staying at home with the kid, they're, they're sending the other kid on a plane somewhere, another kid's going on the bus four states this way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes to play league games, I, you know, just as an example, when we played in the National League Conference, we went to Atlanta from Raleigh, which is about a seven hour drive for one game. Oh which my is gosh. Ab absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. But you know, that that's what you have to do if if you want to play play in those leagues. But that to me, that's a big problem. Agreed. Um an, another problem and which is deeper, but I I don't know what to do with it and it's just society in general now i mean we we get we're getting so mean as a society i mean you see it in road rage and mm. and and everything but just you know at the game sometimes and it seems like the parents of the younger kids just get so wrapped up in the game um at state cup about three years ago i i literally saw about we stayed all day and watched all the games, my son and I, because mm -hmm. um, his he had eight o'clock games, so we stayed all day to watch soccer, and I literally saw twenty arguments between parents, and you know a couple of physical altercations, right. which is ridiculous over a kid's soccer game. Yeah, I mean, not you know, they they're intense, and and I I you know I get carried away, but to to physically get in another parent's face over, you know, my son's soccer game is a little bit out of hand, but that's a societal problem that, that extends way beyond youth sports. Yeah. I but mean, it, I, it, it is a problem. It is a huge problem. And, and I honestly, we could probably spend three hours talking about this, this one problem, right. And we're not going to, um, but I really think it is an issue of, like the parents, the parents making it more about themselves, more about their own egos than like, yeah. let's just let the kids have fun. The, the kids don't care about like all the little nitpicky things that the parents do. Um, and then hitting, you know, on professionalizing kids, what you were talking about, it really is taking away the love of the game and putting on like 
this pressure and it's like almost like it's becoming a job for these kids instead of just yeah. letting them play and that's where real development and real confidence comes from is when they have more autonomy and they're just able to play instead of worrying about being a part of well, you call it the alphabet soup right ecnl yeah, yeah. npl yeah. like who the uh, odp like it's out out of control i think um it, so yeah like a, i said we could parents stress over you yeah. know my kids got to play ecnl and right. You know, when, when you're, at, you know, out socially with your friends and, you know, the dad's over there bragging, well, my, my daughter's in GA and, you know, your daughter's in just a select league. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's a, you know, parents are competitive and, and I understand that because, you know, I'm, I'm as competitive as, 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 as any parent. And, you know, we, we just have to learn sometimes to dial it in ourselves because, you know, I, sometimes I, you know, a few years ago, I was really caught up into that with my son, you know, well, why isn't he playing in this league as opposed to where he's playing? Yeah. And, you know, it, it, I, I totally understand how that can, that can get out of control. We just have to learn to, to control it and, and dial it back and let our kids take more of the lead in, mm -hmm. in their sports journey. Yeah. And that's, that's like why I love, you know, the, the things you post and things you talk about, cause you were in it, like you've made the mistakes and you've, you were self-aware oh, yeah. enough to, to write. And we'll talk about some of those, but you were self-aware enough to take a step back and be like, okay, here's the big picture. Like, here's actually what really matters. It's the mental health It's them having fun. It's, it's them developing and it's all those kind of things. Um, so with that said, we could talk about the problems all day, but I, I kind of want to kind of dive into your formula, which is an awesome solution to some of these problems. And it's the pedal system. So P, so P is perspective, E, evaluation, emotion, D, diagnosis, A, action, L, liberation. Yeah, I got it yes. right? Cool. Yes, well, so, there are actually th three Ps. But... Perspective, persistence, patience. Yes. You got it. So give us a, a broad overview, and then I want to dive deeper into some of them, but give us kind of a broad overview of what it is. Okay, well, well, basically, you know, there, there are three, part, three major parts to, to your kid's soccer journey. Um, they're the parents who finance it and hopefully guide their kid. Um, there's the kid, obviously, who is the most important part, who, who does the playing. And then there is a landscape, and by landscape, I mean, you know, starting with their team, their club, their coach, and then the, the league or what, whatever, whatever league they're playing in. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind the pedal formula was to, to come up with a formula that deals with all of those, but starts from the inside out. It starts from the parents that we're going to guide our kids, we, you know, we have to have a healthy dose dose of perspective, and yes. that that can include a lot of things. But it the the basic idea of the formula is is to control what we can control. And as parents, the only thing that we have total control of is ourselves. Absolutely. And then we have somewhat control over kids. Um, you know, I've got a seventeen year old son, and realize that I don't have much <laughs> control, but you know, <laughs> have a little bit of control over our kids. Yeah. And as far as the soccer landscape, a lot of times, 80% of that can be out of our control. Yeah. But, um, you know, we, we, we have to have perspective and, and know that it's out of our control and just do the best we can within those parameters. So that's kind of the idea of the pedal formula. And, um, I, you know, I wish you to come up with something you know, I would like to have an acronym that was neatly tied with soccer, but you know, I mean, it, it, is works. What it is. It works, right? And and I want to ask you specifically. I think, I mean, they're all so important, but one of the ones I think that parents could could take action on right now is the evaluation and specifically the self evaluation, right? Like that's the first yes. kind of step is a self evaluation. So give yes. us more like what 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 are some things parents can do to do a bit of self evaluation. Well, um, basically, it, it's just, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, am I truly doing what is best for my child? Um, you know, and it's, 
it's little and big things. It's little, little things like, yeah. you know, is my child getting enough sleep? Yeah. Right. You know, with, with soccer and, and activities, you know, they, they leave the house at six 30 in the morning. And if you have a late practice, you know, my son would get out of practice at nine, 10 o'clock. And it, it was often an hour for us to drive. So we'd be getting home at, by the time we got something to eat, we'd be getting home 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Right. So, you know, and we hadn't even talked about homework. Yeah. So, you know, the first thing is, are they getting enough sleep? You know, are they eating properly? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, th- those are things that we as parents can con- absolutely can, can control. Um, what's our behavior like at games? Um, you know, are we yelling at the refs? Are we, you know, are we distracting our kids by yelling out instructions? Are we telling our kids to shoot or pass? You know, I've seen parents that, you know, if their kid plays left back, they'll move their chair down to where the yeah. kid normally sits. And then at halftime, they'll switch to the other side. Yeah. And I've actually heard, I've, I heard a dad say, don't worry about what the coach says. You just do what I tell you to do. I've heard that and, many times. And that kid, I mean, he looked so miserable during that yep. game. Um, it's also about the ride home, which is important. Um, you know, one thing I learned, you know, if if my son lost, I would do everything I could not to talk about the game until he talked about it. If, if uh-huh. he wanted to talk about it, then we'd have a conversation but, I wouldn't bring it up. Otherwise, it was just where do you want to eat? Yeah, totally. Um, and another thing that a lot of parents disagree with is I tried to never talk to my kid about technical things in soccer. Um, you know, although I, I think I know a pretty good amount, I know that, mm-hmm. you know, his coach was trying to coach a different way. It, if I spoke to him, to him about anything technical, I would first ask the coach what he was trying to teach him mm-hmm. and only talk about things that reinforce what the coach was trying to say. So I, I didn't want him to have different messages coming. And mm-hmm. usually I just stayed out of the technical things. I, I tried to keep it to things like effort, um, you know, hustle, um, you know, are you properly warming up and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, the only time that I would ever really get on my son during this whole journey was if I felt he wasn't putting out effort. For sure. And fortunately, I, I never really had to do that. So, mm-hmm. you know, just try to lay off the criticism. I love that. And and with effort, um, I know in, in D diagnosis, that's that's part of it. But a lot of times I see, and, and my dad did this to me, it's like, why aren't you putting in the effort? And it was like this, this criticism. And, and he wasn't really trying to like figure out why it was more of just like, he was mad at me and that doesn't help yeah. anything. So it's like really asking the question, like, like what's going on? Is there, is there something going on at school? Is there something going on to where you're not putting in the effort? Cause usually there's a reason, like usually they're not just not putting in the effort because they're just, you know, being lazy but a lot of times there is a reason for that. So really like, instead of like just coming at them and criticizing, like ask them like genuinely, like what's going on? Is there anything going on that's contributing um, to your performance and that kind of thing? I think that's huge. Yeah. Sideline behavior, man, this is another one we could spend three hours on. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think for this one, um, I have yet to meet a player that really likes their parent to talk on the sideline. I, I, have you ever met a a player that likes their parent yelling from the sideline? No. um, I was fortunate. And even if I did, my my son would ignore us. Um, (laughs) You know, when, when he played, as soon as we pulled up to the field, he was out the door. And so I, I never talked to him until after the game. So, um, we we didn't have too much too much issue with that, um, and you know I I, I want to make it clear there is absolutely nothing wrong with loud cheering and yeah. and, and all that. Yeah. Um, you know I 
I, I never liked when they had silent Saturdays. You know, a lot, a lot of parents say that's great, and maybe the players like. I never really liked that. But, you know, there's a difference between cheering and instructing your kid. Yes. You know, to, to, yeah. to do this, do that, do this. And um, yeah. so, you know, just sideline behavior. You know, parents just need to, to dial it back sometimes. Mm-hmm. And especially with altercations with other parents. Oh, that's and just like I, unacceptable at all. Call. I mean, never is that okay. Yes, but it, it happens quite a bit. Right. And if you're going to do it, leave the field and go do it in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Like, hey, meet me at the parking lot over here. Like, don't do it. Well, fortunately, that's one advantage of being a big guy. Not too many people, you know, come up True. and yeah, True. I've, I've only had ever had one parent really get in my face and Unfortunately, this was before I was an educated parent, and <laughs> I, I, I set a, I think I talked about it in the book, I, I set a bad example for my son, mm-hmm. um, right? because we, we were about to go at it. Yeah, and, and one of the really important things that you said is like, as it pertains to giving instruction on the sideline, and I see this a lot with the girls I work with, and the younger, the younger the parent starts giving instruction on the sideline, the more you're building up a dependency in your child to, to rely on you during the game. Like I see this all the time where a, a player will look over and be like waiting for instruction from mom or dad because they're dependent on that or waiting for validation from mom or dad instead of being focused on the game. So like yes. the, the instruction, just like just watch and cheer and don't just cheer for a kid, like cheer for everybody. I think that's another important point too. Yes. For sure. Cool. So Buford, let's get, let's get honest. All right. What is, I said, let's get honest. Like I, I want to, I want to hear the biggest mistake you've ever made as a soccer parent. Like, let's get vulnerable. What, what would that be? The big, the absolute biggest. Um, probably the, the biggest mistake I've made, and it's a general mistake I, I, it's not a specific thing, but it is thinking about my son's soccer career in my terms mm-hmm. without asking him how he felt, just assuming. Um, there was, there was a, a time when we had the opportunity to switch clubs and, you know, I just assumed that he would want to do it because it was, you know, supposedly a better opportunity. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I said conditionally yes before I even talked to him. Right. And, um, you know, this is when he obviously old enough to decide for himself. And ultimately he did make the decision for himself. But just, you know, I've caught myself a couple of times making decisions or thinking about it from my perspective alone, you know, this is what what was best for him and I think he should do it. When he had a different idea and and fortunately, you know, our relationship is good enough to where we worked it out. But Mm -hmm. I think a a lot of times, like when when my son told me that he didn't want to play in college and Mm -hmm. he knew that I I would be upset by it, a lot of kids, won't have that conversation with their parents now because their parents are caught up into their dream for for their kid and and you know if i'm honest i i got caught up in it too you know i was like well you know my son's gonna you know he's gonna play and then he's gonna play in college and yeah he's gonna go and you know it, it was a it was a very very tough conversation but um you know and I guess the biggest mistake was be, was being that way to where it kind of hurt me that he thought that I was going to be really, really mad at him that he yeah. wasn't playing soccer in college. Yeah. And you know, I, I, had to, I had to sit down and explain to him that, you know, yes, I'm disappointed, mm-hmm. but me, 
you not playing soccer in college has nothing to do with how I feel about you as a person. Yes. And, you know, a lot of times parents give off the impression, whether they mean it or not, as to the kid's worth is, is tied to their soccer performance or their academic performance or their gymnastic performance, right. whatever they do. And, you know, I, I had I had to really check how I was thinking because, you know, my kid had the impression that, that you know, my opinion of him was going to be lower if he didn't play yeah. soccer in college. And so I, w- I would say that was my big mistake is, is get, I guess, getting out in, in front of my skis too much, you know, dreaming about watching him play, play in college when he didn't want to play and him thinking that, you know, him being worried about talking to me about it because he thought I was going to be upset with it. Yeah, I would have if, if, cause there was plenty of times in my career where I didn't want to play anymore, but I was way too scared to tell my dad. And, uh, I don't think I ever got asked the question like, Hey, do you want to play still? Like, I think it was just always implied. So I think having a, a conversation, just, just check in every once in a while, like say, Hey, are you liking it still? Are you having fun? Do you still want to do it? Like I, either way, I'm, I'm going to love you. If you're the worst player in the world or the best player in the world, I'm going to love you either way. And not to throw my dad under the bus, but I, as a kid, we, we, we like the younger they are too. It's, it's harder to understand that like, my parents are going to love me no matter what, because I attributed my, my achievements to my self-worth. And like, if I'm playing well, my dad's going to love me more. If I'm not, then he's not. And I know that's not really how it was, but that's how I saw it as like a 12 year old kid. And so I think that's a huge point is just like having that communication, letting your kid know that no matter what, like, I love you for you, not because of your accomplishments or your accolades or any of that stuff. Yeah, so that that was probably my biggest mistake was getting out in front of him as to what he wanted to do long term. Yeah. And um, you know, having having to explain that, um, you know, I I I would have hoped it would have been self-evident, but obviously it wasn't. So, you know, that that was that was bad on my part, not not his part. Yeah, yeah. And I mean we we all let's just like the, the communication is just like huge between both parties, right? So I love that. And we, we actually got a, a question from, from someone in the Facebook group and I'll give my advice from a player perspective. And then I would love to hear yours from a parents. Um, okay. But she asked about pregame. So she said, pregame advice isn't helpful or just leave it to the coach. So personally, I, if the kid, is, if your kid is asking you for advice, sure, sure. Like, talk about it, but don't give tactical or technical things like you said, but ideally in my eyes and in the eyes of a lot of the girls I work with, uh, they, they don't want to talk about the game with their parents. Like it generally adds more pressure. It generally adds more anxiety and nerves. Um, and if you don't know, ask your daughter, say, Hey, do you want to talk about the game? If they do great, just keep it very positive. Keep it like, okay, let's talk about what, what you want to work on and what you want to focus on, but try to stay away from like positioning and technical stuff. Um, but generally it's not really needed. I would say, what would you say Buford? Well, I, I would say I stayed away from, from talking about the game a lot. Um, you know, most of the times, especially if we had a, a long drive in the car, um, you know, my son had his earbuds on and, you know, uh, he was listening to whatever terrible music he listened to, and I was listening to my music. So um, really, there, there, there wasn't a whole lot going on um, about the game. Now, we we would always be fighting about something at home. Or <laughs> were, we, we were one of those chaos families, you know, get out of the car and everybody's mad, but it wasn't over soccer. It was <laughs> it was over everything else. Right. But um, I... I like I say, I, I never try to give tactical advice. Yeah. And um, usually, you know, I just try to say something motivational to to get him pumped up, you know, one one or two sentences and leave it at that. Like I said, when when we pulled up to the park, my son's out of the car. As soon as, soon as the car stopped, he was out. And, yeah. You know, yeah. going with his teammates or whatever. So um in the car, he listened to his music. I listened to my music. 
occasion we fight over music and and that, it's okay. That, yeah. That was it. We, we we never had any we never had much soccer discussion before the game. It was usually yeah. after the game. Yeah. Yeah, I like that because I think a lot of times girls especially can read too much into it. So if you're gonna tell your kids something, like this is something that I used to tell myself as a kid that would take a ton of pressure off. It's just that all you can ever do is your best. So just go out there, have fun and just do your best. If you play like crap, just at least do your best. Like take the pressure off, let them know that you love them either way. Um, and I think that's the best kind of way to do it is just don't talk because most of the time it's not gonna do any good. <laughs> so yeah, okay, Buford, let's talk about, um, I'm gonna post the link to the book, um, but where can they get the book? Just this link, is there anywhere else where they can get the book? There's a digital copy. Is there also a hard, a hard um, paperback? Yes. Um... The, the digital copy is on my site at the soccerparentlife.us. Okay, so I, I link that one in there. Okay. The Soccer Parent Lifestyle, excuse me, dot US. Beautiful. Um, and you can, the digital book is $6.99. Um, and it comes with the audio book if, you know, people oh, like to listen, listen to that. And um, you can also get the, the, um, physical print copy shipped to you for $17.99. Awesome. And where where can they do that? At the same site. Same site. Okay. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. We have that linked in there. Um, that's really cool about the audiobook. I just had an idea that while you're while your kid is listening to music or doing visualizing or any of that stuff, you as a parent can plug in your headphones or whatever and listen to the audiobook so that you're in the right headspace and so that they're in the right headspace and then everything is beautiful, right? Yes. That's a great idea. I love it. it I love is. it. So get the book, guys. $6.99. Like, seriously, you said in one of your posts, you're like, it's less than a, what did you reference it to? Less than a combo meal or something? Yes. Less than a fast food combo meal. There you go. So you can have a fast food combo meal and be way worse off, or you can get Buford's book and you're going to help yourself. You're going to help your child. You're going to help the whole youth soccer landscape. Like if every parent read this, how much better would youth sports be? Probably a lot. I would hope it could be a lot better. <laughs> I think so. And that's why I wanted to have you on. Um, so thank you, Buford, for coming. Um, it was an amazing conversation. Excited for everyone to read your book. I enjoyed it. And I'm not even a parent. I think there was a lot of amazing stuff in there. Um, so make sure you guys go check out the book. And again, thank you for coming on, Buford. I appreciate you. Oh, thank you, Shay. It was an honor to be here. And um, I'm, I just want to say I like what you're doing with the, with the confidence part for the girls because it, it's so important for your kid to play confidently out there. Um, you know, if, if, if they aren't confident, it doesn't matter how skilled they are, um, yeah. you know, how athletic they are, they're not going to play well. So, you know, what you're doing is is awesome. And, and I... I and you you do it with with the girls. My my daughter didn't play sports. She danced. Yeah, I don't know how confident you have to be for that. But really, that's another story. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it doesn't matter, girls or boys. If, yeah. if they're not confident, they're not gonna play well. So absolutely, you know, what you're doing is is awesome. Well, thank you. Well, thanks for coming on, and everyone, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope it was helpful, and we'll see you next time.